I thought I'd do a um, quick look at wooden planes and how to sharpen them and how to use them really. So, this is, this is going to be one of my videos <laughs> doing almost no editing so one take straight away through so there'll be a bit of camera adjustment do apologize but there we go this is a plane that I use all the time in the workshop I don't have that many wooden planes um, do you know that's rubbish because half of my planes are wood aren't they I've got the the little violin making planes I've got a smaller coffin plane than this coffin plane obviously because of the shape and then um, that one up there which I use a lot. I don't tend to use this one for violin making, um, but it's a lovely jointing plane. Really nice. So why would anyone in their right mind use a wooden plane nowadays rather than uh, an iron one? Have you ever seen any of those competitions in Japan? See them on YouTube. If um, they are planing competitions um, to, to show if you can make perfect shaving uh, and you only have to watch one or two of those to realize that a wooden plane can be set up probably better than you know 99.9% .9 of iron planes can be set up is the important part they're slightly more difficult to set up they're m more difficult to maintain slightly but I I do believe the actual joy of using a wooden plane sort of pays for that uh, many times over. Uh, I'm holding something in my hand here which probably this particular one was made, oh who knows, middle of the 19th century. So it's probably, let's get this right, probably about 170 years this has been in pretty much continual use in various workshops. So I, I, I know you can get iron planes that are you know pretty old as well but there, there's a you know for the for the small amount of money you have to lay out to, to get something like that it feels like you're holding and working with a piece of history they when they're set up nicely they are, have a lower friction on the piece of wood that you're planing than an iron plane they're just really lovely to use once you get used to adjusting them so that's the tool that you need to adjust them um, ideally probably a little bit smaller than this one for this particular plane um, to remove no let's let's start with to adjust um, obviously like this wedge here needs to be slightly relaxed before it's easy to adjust things so to relax the wedge you normally just tap there uh, and that brings everything in this assembly up a little bit to bring the blade up you tap on the back which you can imagine pushes the body of the plane forward the heavy um, mass of, of the blade and cap iron tend to hold it still so it tends to be lifted up if you tap it on the front obviously the reverse happens um, you can adjust it side to side by tapping on the blade near the top um, you then when you're happy you lock the um, the wedge in place by tapping it there so let's just see how we're doing um, it's just the same as any uh, any plane you just sight along the sole and decide what the projection is like <laughs> you know what this is pretty perfect actually so I'm just gonna tap the wedge back into place a little bit of wax not if you're doing joints that need to be glued like a guitar front or a violin sort of uh, front or back joint um, but in most situations a little bit of wax makes this so easy to use right um, and then let's do some planing. Well, first of all, I just want to say that I mean a few other bits and pieces. You can see on here the some of the other ways people adjust these things. You often find, um, and this one not so much, but on the top there, that is often sort of 
peened over where people have a, adjusted this down by tapping directly onto the blade uh, with, a, with a, a metal hammer by the look of it. I don't tend to do that. As I say, I tend to adjust it from the back and the front and then sort of relax this by hitting it there, tighten it by just tapping it there. This, this one has, um, I mean, it's changed shape so much over the years, but I mean, the, I, obviously I've sort of flattened off the bottom a while ago. You can see I've run into a couple of nails here and there. Um, when working on reclaimed timber um, but the base is pretty flat and true very actually um, indeed very uh, but what it isn't is square with the side but that doesn't really matter because it unlike the jointing plane there this is a plane that's never used you know off the side so the fact that it's that lovely flat sole isn't perpendicular to the sides I mean, it's not ideal ideally they would be but it's not it's not um, the end of the game for this one I mean and if you did want it to be so then you just take the blade out obviously put it in a vise and plane it until it's right so um, what else have we got in here? Other, other things to note, normally these will always have, as this one, the hole for removing the cap iron is at the top rather than on modern blades you find at the bottom of the slot. And that means that when you, um, when you take the cap iron off the blade, you can actually just slide it back and up and out rather than the sort of palaver you have to do with, with modern ones, bringing up, putting it, uh, taking it down to the hole and out in, in order to avoid running the cap iron over the, the blade and damaging it. Just a small point. Um, if you can see the history of this thing, I don't know if you can see uh, that rather bad repair. Well, that's, I say bad, but it's a repair that's held up probably for 50 years or something by the look of it, or maybe longer. Yeah, so it's a plane I use a lot. Let's give it some use now. I'm just... Um, repairing our conservatory and one of the things I'm doing is putting some new beads to hold the, um, the windows in. A couple of them have rotted away. Uh, so just using a nice old piece of reclaimed softwood, which is actually quite hard. Um, and uh, here we go. It's, it's not a, it's, it, it, it's not a tolerance critical sort of components so I'm not going to be bothering to measure it I'm not going to be bothering to check it for square as I go Let's... and this is straight off the circular saw actually. so yeah I probably got the blade projecting a little bit more than you would want for some jobs but perfect for just smoothing this, which is all I want to do. And the other sawn face is that one. Um, I want the two plain faces to the outer no so I'll just take the aris off, create a little chamfer. One thing you notice is I'm using a reasonably sized plane just single handed. I mean it's it's much larger than the block plane. It does the job that you would do with a something like a you know number four um, Stanley. Um, but it's because of the weight it's really easy to use single-handed so that's a major advantage I would say so there you go that's it um, signing off now um, anything else to say quickly yeah I mean I I've got 
iron planes, I've got wooden planes, but I just love using these. This, you feel like you're in touch with history and they do a really good job, which is the main thing. Anyway, signing off, over and out. <laughs>